Thank you. <clears throat> Welcome to SoCal. This is our largest conference, 2,500 people when we were 1,900 uh, last year. And 40% of you have never been to SOCAP, and we've done no outbound communication to you. People have found us. There's something happening here. So those numbers are amazing for a conference in its eighth, eighth year, but that says something is happening, that more people are starting to get the idea that there is a market at the intersection of money and meaning, the space between giving and investing. Now, we're also validated this year by having people that speak that we've been asking to come for seven years. People like Sir Ronald Cohen, the father of British venture capital and social investing in the UK. And until yesterday, we had Raj Shah, the head of USAID, but now he's flying to Liberia because of Ebola. So we have a lot of AID folks, but apparently Ebola takes precedence, so I can see that. But they have a huge announcement that really changes things, uh, that makes things different. They're subsidizing the management fees of small funds. That sounds like a technical detail, but it means it makes early stage investing far easier. You can have a small fund and actually have it work. That could solve the problem of what's called the valley of death. That's the gap where promising accelerator startups hit a wall before they get a track record to justify traditional venture financing. That's indicative of something really far larger. It's important infrastructure is coming online that fills important gaps in the market that lets you put your heart into your investments and get your money back. Markets go through three stages. They go from discovery where you figure some things out and you have to figure out who's doing what. And then there's the second phase of a market where it's cooperation, one-off things where train tracks. And then finally the third stage where train tracks are interoperable and financial exchanges work. We're in the third stage of this market, but it's in the early stages. I'm gonna use an analogy from American innovation to point out what that is like. We're at the stages of this social capital market, this impact investing social enterprise market, <clears throat> where in the US, regional railroads were cropping up and they opened up markets. It was really good news, but there was no coordination between the rail lines. So at each rail system, they would have to offload everything, sometimes put it on carts and take it to the next railroad system until they got to the stage where they agreed on the gauges between the railroads. What we're having now is a lot of innovation and infrastructure cropping up, but there's no interoperability much. What AID does is it bridges the railroads. So the widths of the track are being equalized and standardized. Like AID is a crucial bridge between the railroads. It eliminates a huge friction with that vital connection. So we're connecting the railroads, the pieces of infrastructure that are cropping up. That's a really good sign in a market. And it's in that light that we're also excited to continue exploring our partnership with Sandkelp. <clears throat> They're the group from India that puts on the largest social enterprise uh, impact in investor conferences in the global south, in India and sub-Saharan Africa. And we're beginning to come to agree on the stages of our railroads, what we call it, what they call it, what works in India, what works in Kenya, what works in the U.S., and what we can learn from each other. A north-south global learning partnership, our, another piece of the infrastructure that's coming online as we move into the coordination phase, the third stage, the maturation stage of this market at the intersection of money and meaning. Another important railroad linking coming up is professional education. There's been enough research now that we know what a good impact investor does and what bad ones don't do. And we hope to partner with Kathy Clark of Case at Duke and ICAP Partners, Ben Thornley's new startup, to bring professional education to funds, to financial service companies, to the payment providers, to the investment banks who are putting new staffers into this new space, looking at financial inclusion, and trying to figure out what's different about this finance than other kinds of finance. They need to learn. Wall Street folks don't really get it. They need to learn, wherever they're from. So SOCAP was built and owes its growth to focusing intentionally on bringing in the valuable stranger, the unlikely ally. In that light, we have some new valuable strangers in the room here. We have sessions with indigenous investors and entrepreneurs where we're going to explore how to use risk capital in a non-extractive way that's consonant with indigenous values. I think we can do that. We're, we've been in conversation for a while. There's some of those conversations will be really interesting at this conference. And we're gonna talk with an African-American activist and historian about how social enterprise can help a place like Ferguson, Missouri. One of the valuable strangers that is here in force this year are what would have been an unlikely ally just a few years ago are the corporates. 
specifically the financial service companies like American Express and a lot of other financial service companies and investment banks. And the good news is that we don't just have the CSR folks this year, the public affairs funded folks. They have real revenue targets in financial inclusion here in the U.S. That's making money reducing the cost of being poor. That's not making money off the poor, but reducing the cost of being poor, the, the cost of payday lending and other kinds of things where the poor are victimized. Thanks to smartphones and big data, financial inclusion is one of those sweet spots where the market and justice overlap. Those don't come along all the time. We have some things around Obamacare and M Health, where the working poor are actually the most valuable customers in the American healthcare system. And we're going to be looking at those places where the market and justice overlap, and we'll be looking at places where there's still a cost of doing good, where the market doesn't always overlap, and you have to subsidize or have some reduced return. We're a blended value market. We, you can do well and do good. Sometimes there's a cost. Sometimes we work with government. Sometimes we work with nonprofits. And we're figuring out how to do all those things and partner much bigger and much more coherently than we've done in the past. It's building the bridges between the railroads and making the gauges standard, just like we did when we made the railroad system work. We have more than 100 sessions where you can learn and meet your peers and potential partners here at SOCAP. But if you're going to some session and you find it interesting, look at the list of attendees. The, it could be that the, and if you look at their profiles, you can find that the experts are actually sitting next to you and not up on stage. Pay attention to the people that you're in line with at lunch or coffee. Look for the unlikely allies and the valuable strangers that you can find at SOCAP. The power is in the crowd. The power is in the community. We're glad to convene it. I think we have a lot of great content, but also listen to each other. So thank you for coming. This is the biggest crowd we've had, and welcome to SOCAP. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Kevin is staying here on the stage, and he is going to be joined by uh, the board chair of Mission Hub, which is the parent company of SOCAP, and by Tim Freundlich, who's the board president of Mission Hub and uh, SOCAP for a special presentation about the founding of SOCAP. Kevin, if you'll come back. Right. Thank you. So <clears throat> I'm happy to honor Harry Halloran, who was our first sponsor. In fact, the sponsor that allowed SOCAP to become a reality. He put up the money that allowed SOCAP to become a reality when our sponsor proposal was just in a Word doc. It wasn't even baked enough to be in a PDF. And the title, Social Capital Markets, had a little parentheses after it that said, Working Title. Uh, when we, but when we said there needs to be a big tent convening, not another siloed, fragmented convening where you try to get, quote, the right people in the room, which frustrated everybody, he got it. Uh, nobody else was getting it. Harry got it. And it was this intuitive way that he got it when nobody else did that, co that allowed us to hire our two, first two staffers eight and a half years ago to make this thing a reality. Now, if Harry had used the MBA-type market analysis thinking, he wouldn't have done it because the accepted wisdom was <laughs> that you needed the right people in the room. But he used his intuitive gut instinct of the successful entrepreneur that he is, and he caused this thing to happen. Uh, it's the instinct to skate where the puck is going to be and also to not listen to the people that say the puck is not going there. Harry has this intuitive way, early gut-thinking entrepreneur, that caused this to be a reality. And that's what's caused Halloran Philanthropies to be the intuitive early stage investor in funding things that other people might not look at, other people might not think make sense. But Harry and Harold and Philanthropies caused that to happen. So Harry, thank you. This, this wouldn't have happened without you taking a chance on somebody who had a proposal that was not even baked enough to be in a PDF. <laughs> so. So Thank you for come up. Give Harry a big hand yeah. round of applause. <laughs> Harry! You can stand up. There you go. Thanks, I Harry. get to hug you. And I get to give you. Thanks, man. It's a so cap, right? Pretty clever. <laughs>
And uh, I also actually have so caps for Mark and, <coughs> and Tony, if you would like to please take these with my appreciation. They're actually monogrammed, just so everybody can see. <laughs> yeah. Harry, do you want, have anything you'd like to share briefly before we roll you off stage for the next <laughs> event? <laughs> the, uh, you know, the operable word is brief. Uh, but I want to tell you the real story. It was a little different than what Kevin said. Uh, Kevin interpreted my actions as if it was an intelligent, well thought out, entrepreneurial thing. Well, the real truth is, and I'd like Tony and Mark to come up here beside me while I tell the real story of how SOCAP got funded. So Mark Beam, <clears throat> Mark is one of the founders too, and Tony, and uh, so what really happened was that Mark and Tony said, you know, Harry, there's this really cool thing happening. It's called SOCAP. And uh, I said, well, that sounds interesting. Uh, what's it all about? Well, we're going to be getting hopefully three or 400 people here, and, and we're going to have interface. Uh, it's different than the, than the Skull Forum in London, you know. It's really going to be exciting, and we're looking for sponsors. And they have platinum sponsors, and they have gold sponsors, and they're trying to get quite a few platinum sponsors, and uh, we would like you to be the platinum sponsor. So I said, wow, how much is that going to cost? What was it? 100000 100, Yeah, I thought it was more than that. No. 100000 All right. <laughs> so for only 100000 then, then I found out that... Uh, we were the only platinum sponsor. I said, Tony, you didn't tell me. I thought the Rockefeller, I mean, you know, people with real money. I mean, a lot more money than we have. And um, they didn't become a platinum sponsor. I don't know where they, they are now. At all. Well, they are now. Good. Well, that's good. So, so anyway, it was, it's been, it's just wow, right, that it started very humbly, the timing uh, in a way, couldn't have been, on the one hand, worse. At the start of the, uh, the, the recession was just collapsing. And, you know, the work uh, of, the, of the founders really made this all happen. So, again, a, a little bit of applause again for Kevin and Rosa. And for your... Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Anyway, so the best thing is... Uh, to say is, wow, this is, you know, a dream come true. It was uh, articulated as something that might happen and grow, and it's grown from five or 600 people, I think, was the mm -hmm. first one. They th were trying for three or 400. They got five or 600. It was an indication it was going to grow now to 2,500. So thanks for the recognition, folks. <laughs> great. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. That's great. Yeah. yeah.